bug out survivor and I've got a range of sleep mats now these are the non inflatables so who are the non inflatable pads for people who are reluctant to use inflatables perhaps because they might burst that might be an issue people are concerned with the weight of some inflatables but modern day inflatables now are just a few grams so the pros and cons that these non-inflatables aren't going to pack very small a size like this as where inflatables are a lot more compact a lot smaller and would easily fit inside the pack another drawback to non-inflatables like this is that they aren't always as insulated as some and i state some of the more professional inflatable uh, camp mats this one claims it has a high r rating we'll see this one the standard issue british you might consider something like this which is a yoga pad also i came across one of these this one unfolds like a concertina or an accordion and there's the budget c cf pads there so let's see which is which these here are c c f pads that's close cell foam it's a pretty delicate foam maybe two or three camps maybe single use however if you look after them and don't give them too much of a hard time you'll get a few goes out of them and you can use them for other things some of it is coming off like i said they're pretty much single use really very very light but they're only five quid each you can buy two of these for 10 pound and what i do with these is i put them under my tent so i've got an insulated floor now i've used these for a long time certainly since i was a, a teenager when money was tight these are what you'd be buying and they work quite well very well actually not so much for a uk winter but you can take them right through up until winter that is probably one of the benefits to these little ccf pads with the reflective backing these are super lightweight super cheap they work as um an insulator very well actually paid five pound each i got two of them for 10 quid they do insulate there's nothing wrong with them at all other than they're not going to be that durable okay let's move on to the next one pretty similar but this is a folding mat this is what they call the egg crate as you can see it kind of looks like one silver back in there so a budget version like this i think it was about 10 to 13 pound if memory serves i bought it last year i use this particular one on a, a nice hot summer's night i was expecting it to feel cold around you know four or five in the morning before the sun comes up and i slept straight through it I slept straight through it i couldn't feel any cold now the egg crate really does help insulate and the kind of mylar backing helps insulate too so you get two lots of insulating properties there this one you're going to feel every lump and bump under the under your back it's adequate enough shoulder space my arms don't quite fit on but it's no big deal if you've got a sleeping bag your arms would be in anyway but I i'm using quilts these days i bought this to test whether i would like a more expensive version of this and if this little happy shopper one works so well to insulate 
I think I will get the more expensive one. If you're a side sleeper, no cushioning for under your hip. But I'm kind of used to sleeping just on the ground with this pad, Japanese style, because I lie on hard floors to uh, help repair a spinal problem. So I've been lying on hard terrain for quite a long time. So for me, it's doable for you. I don't know. Like I said, if you're a side sleeper, none of these pads are particularly good for you but if you alternate between your back and your side they're comfortable enough <sighs> packing away pretty simple concertina and that's another benefit over inflatables is you don't have to deflate them it's just a case of folding them up making yourself an elastic ring and that's you packed away. A good benefit to these mats. We're moving along to the next one. The yoga pad. It's more sizable, this one. And the weight is a little more noticeable. Now, I've used these in a hammock. I've used them on the ground. However, the newer ones like this are microplasties free. And that is in line with new regulations at state. You've got to minimise or totally eradicate microplasties in materials of your products. Unfortunately, it was the microplasties that was insulating so well in the older yoga pads. You can see quite thick. Um, I think 12 mil for this. And it's a shame because it's lost all its insulating value. But it is a little more comfortable. Now, if I was a taller person and I didn't have enough pad, I'd keep it behind my shoulders and use a pillow here. And that would ensure my feet would be on the mat. As it goes, I have just about enough room they're all pretty much the same size you are gonna notice your hips with a lot of these mats digging into the ground that is where the benefit of an inflatable would come in i don't really have much of an iliac crest at all even when backpacks will slip off my hips i've got no hips so i can side sleep on this now females will have a much more pronounced iliac crest and pads may not suit um, the lady hiker and you may decide an inflatable will offer more support on the hip but if you lie on your back none of these are a problem at all again they're all pretty much under 10 quid all of them with this one just roll it up no technique at all it's quick so you um, pack one of these, another benefit over inflatables as we discussed. About six, seven quid this. The makeup of this one is a PVA based um, material. It's more sponge like and it can leave lacerations where your bungees have been or if there's a twig or a rock and then indentations don't spring back out if you have a pad like that you've pretty much got a pva based uh, poly mat shame they've taken out the plastics it's good for the oceans it's good for the environment it's crap for camping now this is nato stock standard it doesn't come with this little um, waterproof housing for it I purchased that separately. This is what is known as the XPI mat, British Army. Now this material from the British Army won't leave the lacerations if it's been left lying on a rock. You can see there are bits that have been chipped out, leaving them on rocks, but this is 2001, this pad. So this pad is the best part of 20 years old. It's still going. I still use it. 
just has a little tape. If you can tie your shoelaces, you can do this. In mine, keep a spare hat. And in the other side, a spare scarf for sleeping. A lot longer than some of the others here to accommodate the British soldier. Better shoulder width. My arms can just about fit on the pad. If you're in the sleeping bag, that is no longer an issue. But if you're a quilt sleeper, that's something to take into account. Although it's one of the toughest mats, there is zero cushioning on this. Um, a tough mat for a tough people. There are tricks and techniques you can side sleep comfortably. But um, belly sleeping and back sleeping are best for this kind of pad. It's pretty unforgiving. It's insulating properties aren't brilliant. I've taken this one down to about five degrees above and on its own without a sleeping bag, just in the bivvy and boy, I was frozen, absolutely frozen. Luckily, um, the British Army do provide the BCB inflatable to partner up with this. Then you have got one hell of a system. You have this because it's tough and then you have your inflatable three quarter length to insulate your main core from the shoulders down to the back of your legs. If you do have these three quarter length mats from British Army, don't keep them above your head here and put your head on it. They only are designed to come up to your shoulder length and that will make them longer. It'll come up to behind your knee rather than just enough to get your backside on. You can have a separate pillow um, made of a jacket in a stuff sack or whatever you want for that reason. Again, one of the key features of all these maps are just how quick they can be deployed and rolled up, squared away onto your pack. All you need to know is how to tie a shoelace. They're always worth having, you know, um, although there's very little insulating value. It's just the fact they're so tough. You can kind of sleep on a more unforgiving terrain but there's no cushioning there's zero cushioning you do have to be a bit of a maverick hard ass just to use one of these on their own i didn't like it on its own once i added in the three quarter length of course i didn't have any issues i then could take it down to about five degrees above the British Army XPI mat. Tough, not very well insulated. Um, it's pretty much a go-to for the Brits. They're all around the 10 quid mark. Every single one of these pads I'm gonna show you. So they're not gonna break the bank. Let's come to this one. The Highlander. It's less than 300 grams, I think 285. Just going off memory, that might be wrong. It is claimed to be a five season NATO mat. This again, to me, denotes some kind of PVA just because of how lacerated it is. As you can see, it doesn't keep its shape very well. Five seasons for less than 10 quid. Had to get it to find out. So plenty long enough. It's just about fills my shoulders. Arms would be on the ground. The claim of this being five season, I find completely bogus. It is amazingly comfortable to bear skin sleep on because the material feels very much like a velour or a velvet it's very little to no support for, from the ground you feel every lump and bump you feel every twig every rock 
Um, I would use this as a topper. Beautiful material to put your bare skin straight on. What about its claim to be in five season? Absolute BS, absolute BS. On its own, I wouldn't use it in the, in the summer. Companies like Highlander who support such claims, I don't know how they're getting away with it. I took this out last November and it was hovering around the two or three degrees uh, Celsius, which is just above the freeze point. This on its own, I was shivering. So all under 10 quid, pros and cons to all of them really. Um, I'm gonna pull out now my two favorite. Coming in at second place, cheap, cheerful, CCF close cell phone pad uh, with a metallic backing. It's not mylar, it's more like a foil. Little one use, two of them for a tenner. Surprisingly warm. I have taken this right through till September, just on one pad like that. I put two side by side under my tent and I was pretty surprised. And then out of these five, it's this. This also has a reflective coating. Now that is the bit that does the insulating that keeps you warm. This also help, helps keep you warm. The egg crate design. None of these are really suitable for side sleeping. But again, I use this right up until I think October. 3rd of October was the last time I used this, last year. And the temperature was about seven or eight degrees nighttime temperature. Surprisingly comfortable, can still feel the lumps and bumps. Y you will with all of these. So the cons with all these non-inflatables. You are going to feel a lot of the lumps and bumps with these pads. Every single one of them. If you want more comfort, you should be looking towards an inflatable. So you can combine these with an inflatable and it'll help as a backup. So if your inflatable develops a, a puncture, you have a backup. And a lot of pro hikers do this. Um, if you're doing something like the APT or um, the Northern Crest Trail, you'll generally be pad or inflatable just to save a little bit of weight i've seen hikers pro hikers use either of these or both combined depending on how much weight you're prepared to hump 1300 miles for six months <laughs> no conclusion time anything really with reflective backing is going to be a far beneficial mat to you than anything without. And that is the sundial folding mat or the Plotel foam rolling mat. Both very light. Uh, they're all pretty light, actually. The Army one uh, is going to be somewhere around 600 grams. Uh, just maybe half that for some of the others that aren't military spec obviously the folding one i quite like uh, the sundial that was about 13 quid from china i wanted to see if it would suit me before i buy a much more expensive one i think thermarest do one uh, it's a folding mat has the metallic it's going to be made of better um, components or materials when they make the mat it's going to last longer hence the 50 quid mark I'm gonna get one the CCF with a reflector 
cheap and cheerful, five quid each, get two for ten, lie them side by side, or however you want to use them, you can cut them up, do what you want with them, bargain. Um, the yoga mat, it was explained before uh, that you can't use micro polyplastics in products anymore. And this is quite a recent yoga pad, and it is not the high density foam that I like. Now, in order to make foam HDF high density foam, you need the microplastics, the poly microplastics. Now that's been banned, it no longer insulates as well as my other mat. I have felt the cold in this. It's one of the more comfortable. It kind of takes away some of the undulations and from the ground. The Highlander, absolute bogus claims of five season. Um, it's, they should be struck off some sort of selling register. I really do think that. However, like I said, to use as a topper on either an inflatable if you're um, a cold sleeper and a quilter, it's brilliant. 280 odd grams, it's not bad. The Army IXPI map, obviously 600 grams, doesn't offer much in the way of insulation or support from the ground. It's just a good all-rounder. Every single one of these I've tried to fashion in the £10 bracket. Pros to these mats cost, they're cheap, they roll up quickly and they're not going to puncture and they're light. So some of the cons with non-inflatables is you are going to feel the terrain underneath you a lot more than inflatables. They're not going to insulate as much as a good inflatable and it's the bulk. You can't just pop one in your pack. They have to ride on your pack, under your pack. Um, there are techniques I can use to get them in my pack but um, I just want to show you really the difference between some of these pads. Now hang about just for a couple of weeks or so and I'll give you a showdown of inflatables which are all insulated. I've got four of the very best names in the industry from Thermarest, Climate, Xped and Multimat. Every YouTube I've seen will tell you that their pad is better than another company and so on and I found that to be quite confusing because no one's going to diss their own pad are they after spending 50 100 200 pounds on it got no agenda to tell you otherwise whether things work better than they do or they don't but then again it's purely subjective to my opinion i've got all four they're all insulated they've got a high r tog rating some of them have different properties of insulating value to them. I'll tell you my thoughts on them. Join me on that in a few weeks' time. I forget when it's coming out, two or three weeks' time. If you're not subbed, just hit the notifications bell um, if you want to see that. Of course, if you're already subbed and you've had enough of this channel, you can always unsub. I don't get paid for doing it. It makes no difference to me if I've got six million or six subscribers it makes no difference to me at all you're either here to enjoy it or you're not so a no bs approach there to the inflatables and non-inflatables and that'll do for me so until next time take care of yourself and i'll see you out there